Hello viewers, welcome back to another episode. And in this episode I want to show you the last machine of my collection, which I don't showed you in detail, and this is the VEX 4200. Um, you've seen that machine in several other of my videos, but you know, I will show you a more detailed tour and a detailed overview about the hardware of that machine. And that machine is a VEX 4200, not a VEX server, so this is the time-sharing version of uh, Wax. And uh, I've told in some of my previous videos that I don't have a license for time sharing uh, server because I don't have a type A license, but um, based on comments of my uh, licensing video, um, I need only type C license and I have type C license, so I have a proper license for that machine. I uh, had it all the time and uh, did not know about it because I thought I need A and C together, but you do need uh, A or C. Now, there was also a comment on the German video that my channel is called Deck Computers and uh, I do not show really big wax machines, but I do not have really big wax machines. I do not have a wax 6000, 8000, 10000 or, some, or a wax 11 or something like that. So I cannot show you these machines. I can only show the, you, know, you the machines I have. And uh, this because this is the uh, fifth and last machine of my collection. Uh, this will be the last yeah, uh, hardware overview video uh, until I get a new machine. I can show you the uh, High Note 2000 laptop from Digital, but it's not original made by Deck. It's made by an OM manufacturer, so I don't think it's necessary to make a dedicated video about this uh, High Note uh, notebook. Or even if, when, when uh, do you want that, I want to show you also that uh, laptop. I can uh, do a video about it, but uh, I think it's not necessary to make such a video. This is a machine from the outside. Um, there are two different versions available. This is a smaller one, there is also a bigger one. And um, these are the two chassis, the same chassis like um, of uh, Microvex 3400. So uh, Digital Diggings has a video about his Microvex 3400. Um, I will link that video down below. And this is the bigger chassis and this is the smaller chassis. And um, you were able to upgrade the Microvex 3400 to a Vex 4200 um, only with change the CPU module. You can, here's something you can open and behind that here is a hard drive, this is a SCSI hard drive. It's original from that machine but it's disconnected so it's not in use, it's only to, uh, to have something in here. Um, you uh, saw in my intro that it was uh, empty for quite a long time and I hope I will find maybe a TK70 or something like that to put, uh, put in there. So and I can remove the hard drive but at the moment uh, there is the hard drive. Here you can turn the machine on or off, and here are the configuration for the uh, DSSI hard drive. So this is a SCSI hard drive, but there's also a um, DSSI hard drive in there. Uh, you will uh, see this uh, hard drive later. And uh, but this uh, DSSI hard drive wasn't original from that machine. It's from the original cluster, um, from uh, VEX 4300. It's one of the eight original hard drives, and it's here. And um, here you can set the IDs for the hard drives. And here you can set the white protect and the ready. And here are some system boards you can restart the machine. The red button is here and you can hold the machine. And here you can see that the machine is, the voltage is okay. And over here are the uh, forward indicators for the hard drives. And here you can set the ID with these plugs, like on my VEX 4300. And because this is the same panel, as you can see, you can configure uh, three hard drives. But the DSSI connection goes only to the left part and there's only uh, enough space for one full height uh, 500 quarter inch hard drive or two uh, half height uh, 500 quarter inch hard drives. This is the same board like in the bigger chassis and the bigger chassis has space for three hard drives. That's the reason why you can uh, configure three hard drives and but uh, there's not enough space for that. So let's open it there again. I have to put this thing out and then you can take it apart. So it's not the door like on my VEX 4300. You have to put it to the top. Um, then the other thing here, this is the external DSSI connection and uh, viewers from my previous um, videos know that the DSSI bus does not work from that machine or did not work, I have to say now, because um, I fixed the problem with the DSSI bus. Here this is the power supply, and in the power supply were two broken capacitors. 
not I don't I don't, I, I'm, I've measured the, the 5 volt and 12 volt to the hard drive and this is perfectly okay I think it was something like 3.3 volt or something like that because but uh, based on the experience with my VEX 4300 I realized that the DSSI is uh, quite sensitive uh, in case of voltage. And uh, I've looked into the power supply and it was, it was quite hard to see that the capacitors were, bro capacitors were broke, but I've replaced it. And now it detects the uh, hard drive uh, into the, in the machine and uh, the DSSI bus is uh, working again. Um, here are the connectors. This is the KFQSA. Uh, this is the second DSSI Q bus card I've added to the machine because uh, the uh, the DSI bus did not work uh, some months ago, and uh, I need a DSI connection, so I've added this this card at the moment uh, because this DSI bus is working again. I do not need this uh, card, but I will leave it in the machine because it's uh, a safe place for the machine. And here, behind these connector, behind these covers, are the memory and the CPU. I will show you that later. Um, I have a connection here uh, for 10 base 5 and 10 base 2 and a switch. It's a typical 4 machine. This is the operator's console connection. And then here I have uh, some indicators for the current CPU state. And um, you can uh, put the CPU board out and put another one in and then you have a MicroVax 3400. So it's just, you have to change the um, CPU module as ever um, after it get available. And uh, these are two Spare QBOS uh, ports uh, or, um, or QBOS lanes, but I do not have metal covers for it, so it have to has to be open. Um, maybe it's a problem with the airflow, but there's also the, the plastic cover in front of, so I don't think that's not uh, that's not an issue when uh, the the metal covers are missing. And down here this is the power connector, and uh, there is the van down there. And um, interestingly, this is the same power supply like in the uh, bigger uh, chassis. Um, down here is the connector, and the bigger chassis has a second power supply on the right side. Behind this cover is nothing; it's only it's empty. It's only a cable from the power power switch down there. Okay, so let's have a look what is behind the covers. You can see behind the covers um, on the right. This is the CPU module, the K660. Um, here on the right connector is the DSSI connector, which goes through there, and then. Over here, I will show you what's behind this cover. Uh, the next scene, and then here, these are two memory. No, oh, these are here. These are two memory modules, and um, between the um, uh, CPU module and the two memory modules is uh, this this cable here, because the backplane is a pure QBus backplane. There is no other connection, not special connection like on my VEX 4300 and therefore the CPU and the memory needs another cable to, for the communication. And here over there, this is the KFQSA DSI controller without the cover. So uh, next I will show you what is behind here and after that I will take out the cards and show you the cards in detail. So that's behind the covers. This is the SCSI device I've told you in the beginning. And over there is, is an R74 DSSI hard drive, which is connected with the DSSI cable starting over here. And then it goes here, there, there it ends the easy cable. And then there's another cable connected. And then it goes to the hard drive and then to the external connector where the is located at the moment. And this is the board you've seen before, and there is a small cable, this gray one here. This goes to the hard drive for the hard drive configuration. Down here you can see, uh, around, you can see how which which connector uh, goes to which uh, part of the front panel. And I've used the middle one, so you can see here. Let's have a look at the boards from the machine. And as you can see here, all boards are QBOS boards, so they have QBOS um, connection. Um, over here, this is the uh, KFQSA DSI controller. And this is a QBOS DSI controller I've added later to the machine. And um, you can see there's a lot of chips on that board. And uh, later on, on the CPU, uh, all this is in single chip. This is the uh, Shuck or SHAC DSSI controller, so it was a single chip solution later on, I think five years later, then this controller um, was released. 
Um, so the uh, QFQ SA is also one of the slowest. This eye controller I've read about uh, 170 uh, input output operations per second, which is uh, quite slow. And this controller is also able to uh, communicate to hard drives only, so it cannot uh, mesh into machine communication. So for a VEX cluster, when you have two machines um, on a DSSI bus, um, you can use the uh, KFQSI for the communication over the DSSI bus between the machines. Then the cluster needs a second uh, communication uh, way, maybe Ethernet or something like that. So down here, there are the memory boards. This one is uh, CMX3251. It's uh, from Camenton, so it's not an original uh, memory board. Um, this is a 32 megabyte board. And here over there, this is um, original uh, digital memory board with 8 megabyte. And you can see, um, I think, um, the 16 megabyte version has more, more chips. They use the same, uh, the same PCB and uh, uh, put less or more chips on it. Depends on how big the board, the board must be. And here on the right, this is the KA660 CPU module. And this is the most interesting board, I think, from that machine. And um, over there, this one, I uh, think this one, yeah, this one, this is the DC222 SOC. It's uh, CVAX plus uh, chip. And um, it's based on the uh, micro microvax instruction set. So the microvax instruction set does not implement the whole VEX11 instruction set in the machine um, from a hardware point. So some VEX commands are uh, emulated by microcode. And the SO, um, the DC222 is the same um, processor like in my VEXstation 4000 VLC. Um, then um, are some more chips here. This is the uh, system support chip. And this is the QBus controller because it's the QBus system. Um, this one here is the memory controller. And this one here is the SN controller. And as I said, this uh, down here, this is the uh, SHAC or SHAC, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, which is the DSSI controller. And this DSSI controller uh, is able to uh, communicate with 800 uh, input output operations per second. So it's quite, uh, it's, a lot of faster than the KFQSA. Interestingly, the um, Microrux 3400 has also an ESI controller on the board, on its CPU board. Um, it's called EDA640, and the EDA640 is also faster than the QFQSA, but slower than the uh, SHAC. But the uh, QFQSA and the SH uh, AC are able to access the memory directly and the EDA640 um, from the MicroX 3400 uh, has to use uh, interrupts for communication with the processor. Uh, these here, these are the DSSI terminators. You can remove and replace them. Over here you can set the ID of the DSSI um, controller, and then this is the connection to the um, controller board on the front. And here this is the DSSI connection, and uh, under there there is the cable you've seen before be between the memory modules and the CPU board, because you need uh, another cable, and you cannot communicate um, over the QBus alone, so there must be another way of communication. And over here this is the uh, controller board from the front, uh, I have opened it because uh, down here were the battery, and the battery leaked. Um, but there is, it's caused no damage on the board. Um, I've removed a bit, not everything, but I think it's, it's okay now and I will put this board back together. Okay, so let's put everything back together and see if everything is still working. So let's uh, turn on the machine. And the machine is starting. And I put our terminator for uh, 10 base 5 and in and a DSI terminator in here, and now the machi machine will start. I'm using the DEC Hynode laptop as a terminal. Uh, that was a comment that uh, I should not use uh, my ThinkPad because ThinkPad is originally made by IBM, and IBM and DEC there seems to be some kind of uh, uh, problems between these two companies. Uh, I do not have this kind of uh, IBM obsession, but 
if some persons have a problem with a ThinkPad, also when my ThinkPad is made by Lenovo, I will use now the digital notebook. And um, it's a day later because um, yesterday I've tried it the first time and I did not uh, saw the uh, DSSI hard drive. I don't know if it's shown now. Let's enter show DSSI. Ah, no, no, the hard drive is there. And yesterday the hard drive wasn't there and I've checked the uh, power supply and everything um, again and checked the capacitors. And I don't know what was the issue why the DSSI hard drive uh, wasn't detected. And then I found out that the power supply never was the problem with the DSSI bus. Um, the problem is a broken cable. And the um, cable is broken between the hard drive and the terminator. And um, when you move the cable a bit, then the hard drive um, uh, is detected. And in one of my previous episodes, one of, I think it was my second video I've ever released, I've measured the cable, but I've measured the cable only from the controller to the hard drive and not uh, the part from the hard drive to the terminator. And um, therefore I did not uh, found the uh, broken cable. Um, things is uh, only one uh, of the cables, one part of the cable will be broken because when you move the cable in a special way, like at the moment, um, the uh, connection is there, um, therefore I will check this cable someday, but at the moment, in a special position, uh, the DSSI bus is uh, working. Yeah, that's uh, the end of that episode, and uh, I hope you find that interesting, and uh, see you next time, and leave comments below.